Hi, and welcome to class 10 of Science Fiction Filmmaking 101. In this class, I'm going to talk about the process in shooting and creating digital bodies. Now, in my debut feature film, The Beyond, the big task was to create a photorealistic human 2.0. That is where the body is augmented, but the mind and face is still 100% human. Now, bear in mind, this is an independent feature film with a very tight budget. So therefore, I had to think outside the box to achieve in this. The first thing I did was to work with a CG artist to create the 3D asset of the digital body. We did this using Autodesk Maya and rendering with shaders in V-Ray. Now this part of the process could take weeks to months from initial ideas and design to building the geometry and then shading and texturing before rigging a skeleton for animation later. But I have to stress it's very important to nail your design here, as changing it later in the process will be very expensive. We knew we had to utilise the actor's performance, and therefore would need some kind of motion capture. So we created a poor man's version of motion capture suit by purchasing some gym leotards from a sports store, and then applying sticky dots as tracking markers on them. Now before attempting this madness, we did several tests with the actors to ensure we nailed the process down. This also gave the actor an opportunity to get used to the process in advance and the cinematographer to figure out what things we would need technically to achieve this. From the test, we established that we would need numbers on the tracking strips so that in visual effects, the CG artist can assign the CG skeleton bones to each of those numbers during the match moving stage. We also established that we would need witness cameras such as GoPros in various angles on the set for reference purposes to help with animation later. The next thing I did was hire the best tracking and match moving artists I could find. This person would be on the set responsible for placing the tracking markers and acting like a supervisor. But also this person would be the person responsible for match moving the CG body on the actor's body later. So this person would know exactly what is required in the footage to make his or her life easier in visual effects. FYI, if you don't do that, then it will bite you in the ass later, especially when it comes to visual effects, when the artists are complaining that they can't track the shots or it's taking forever to do, which would not only eat into your schedule, cause unnecessary stress, but also eat into your budget. So. Please don't skimp out on getting the right person on set to oversee this and gather all the data required rather than trying to fix it in post. Meanwhile, the visual effects supervisor on set would ensure lighting and reflection data was captured, as well as capturing as much reference photography from all angles of the set, including color charts, measurements, and so on. This would help with the CGI integration of the digital bodies later on in visual effects. We also use prosthetics to cover up the hair and make our character bald, so that when placing the CG head section of the digital suit, we didn't have to deal with hair which would be a nightmare to remove in post. But also, we wanted a seamless blend between her face and the digital head section. So therefore, we applied a photogrammetry scan of her head using several photographs taken on the day and then stitched together using Autodesk recap software. To apply the performance of the actor's motion to the digital body, we rigged the CG asset with a human skeleton, but also adjusted each digital suit to match the dimensions of both actors. We then overlaid the CG body on top of the live action plate and used a combination of object tracking to match move the body with the CG suit as well as using a rotomation approach to animate in the performance of the CG body to match the motion and the nuances of the actor's performance.